Hi, this is Mrs. Freifeld, and this is the second video I've made on subtraction. This one's a little harder because the top number is going to have a zero in the middle. You need to remember that when you subtract, the top number must be larger or the same as the bottom number. You can take 2 away from 5, but you can't take 5 away from 2. If the top number is smaller, you have to remember you've got to borrow. But you need to remember that you can only borrow from your neighbor. So the ones place value can only borrow from the tens place value. And the tens can only borrow from the hundreds and so on and so on. So we're going to look at an example here. The first thing I do when I start a subtraction problem is I look and I make sure that I did put the larger number on top. And in this case, I did. The top number is bigger than the bottom. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to cover up everything but the number that's in my ones place so I don't get confused. Now I'm going to look. Is the top number bigger than the bottom? No, it's not. So I have to borrow from my neighbor. So the ones place goes over to the tens place. Is there something to borrow? Nope, there's not. But the tens place can borrow from the hundreds place. So you mark out the 7 and make it a 6. And the one that you borrow, you put in front of this 0 and make him a 10. Now can the 1 place borrow from the tens? Sure can. You're going to mark out the 10 and make him a 9. And the one that you borrow is going to go in front of the 4 and make it a 14. And what I do when I subtract is I always count up. I make my fist be the bottom number. So there's 8, and I'm going to count up to 14. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. How many fingers did it take for me to get there? It took 6, so that's the number that I'm going to write at the bottom. Now let's look at this tens place. Is the top number bigger than the bottom? It is. So my fist is going to be 6, 7, 8, and 9. It took 3 fingers to get there, so I'm going to write 3 at the bottom. Now I'm going to uncover the hundreds place. Is the top number bigger than the bottom number? It sure is. My fist is going to be 2, and I'm going to count up to 6. There's 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It took four fingers to get there, so that's the number I'm going to write at the bottom. Let's try it again. Check to make sure you wrote the problem correctly. The top number has to be bigger than the bottom. Well, it's correct, so let's cover up everything but what's in the ones place. And now look, is the top number bigger than the bottom? No, it's not. So I need to borrow from my neighbor. So the ones place goes to the tens place. Is there anything to borrow? No, but the tens place can go to the hundreds place. I'm going to mark out the seven and make him a six. The one that I borrow, I'm going to put in front of that zero and make it a ten. Now is there something for the ones place to borrow? There sure is. You mark out the ten and make him a nine, and the one that you borrow goes in front of that zero to make him a ten. And now I'm going to count up. My fist is 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. It took four fingers to get there, so that's the number I'm going to write at the bottom. Is the top number bigger than the bottom? It sure is, so now I'm going to count up. My fist is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. It took 6 fingers to get there, so that's the number I'm going to write at the bottom. And now I'm going to look at the hundreds place value. Again, I'm going to ask, is the top number bigger than the bottom? It sure is. I'm going to make my fist be 3, 4, 5, and 6. It took 3 fingers to get there. That's the number I'm going to write at the bottom. Let's try one more example. 
The first thing I do when I have a subtraction problem is I make sure I wrote it correctly. Is the top number bigger than the bottom? It is, so I'm going to cover up everything but the place value I'm working with. Now look at it. Is the top number bigger than the bottom? No, it's not, so I need to borrow from my neighbor. The ones place can only borrow from the tens. Is there something there? No, there's not, but the tens can borrow from the hundreds. And there's something there. I mark out the five and make it a four. And the one that I borrow goes in front of the zero and makes him a ten. Now is there something for this zero to borrow? Sure, I'm going to mark out the ten and make it a nine. And the one that I borrow, I'm going to put in front of that zero and make it a ten. And now I'm going to count up. My fist is six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. It took four fingers to get to ten, so that's the number I'm going to write at the bottom. Now let's look at the tens place. Is the nine larger than three? It sure is. So I'm going to make my fist be the bottom number, which is three, and I'm going to count up. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. It took six fingers to get there. That's the number I'm going to write at the bottom. And finally, I'm going to look at the hundreds place. I'm going to ask myself, is the top number bigger than the bottom? It sure is. So my fist is going to be one, two, three, and four. It took three fingers to get there. That's the number I'm going to write at the bottom. Remember to pay attention and check to see if the top number is bigger than or equal to the bottom number. If not, you have to borrow. You did a great job. This is Ms. Freifeld. Bye for now.